start uh, with this plane crash. Uh, have you been briefed on it? Because it certainly sounds like it was a mistake by the Iranians. Do you think they assumed this was some sort of U.S. military plane? Well, I have been briefed on it, Wolf, in the Intelligence Committee, so I'm not really at liberty to say. But uh, if what is being projected is true, uh, this is yet another example of collateral damage from the actions that have been taken in a provocative way by the President of the United States. Well, is this type of miscalculation, let's say, on the part of the Iranians, more likely now to result in even heightened tensions? I would say that the uh, continued saber, excuse me, the, the continued saber rattling by the president uh, doesn't help us. Um, I also feel strongly that by taking out General Soleimani, that that did not somehow uh, rid us of any of the planning that the Iranians would be doing, or that the Shia militia that is um, throughout the region uh, is also engaged in doing. And we also have the, the leader of the Shia militia who was assassinated as well, that uh, may be the subject of some efforts to seek revenge. Uh, this needs to be de-escalated. The president needs to stop saber rattling. He needs to find a way to uh, use our allies to find a, a means by not just tamping this down, but getting uh, Iran to the table where we can renegotiate a joint um, agreement on the use of nuclear weapons and uh, move forward in a manner that is, is not as uh, bellicose as the president has been as he addresses Iran. Iran has been a bad actor. Soleimani was a bad actor. But there are many people in that region and around the world that are bad actors. We have to find a way to live together um, and attempt to move towards peace. I, very quickly, because I know you've been briefed, and I, I, I wonder if you could tell us, uh, we know that the U.S., the president, del deliberately ordered uh, the killing of uh, Qasem Soleimani, uh, the top Iranian general, but uh, he was with uh, Abu Mahdi al muhandis the top uh, pro-Iranian Iraqi Shiite militia leader. Was the U.S. deliberately trying to kill him as well? I can't speak to that. Uh, well, but we do know that they're both dead now as a result of U.S. action. And it is more than provocative. And we have um, seen what the Iranians did in terms of tr attempting to uh, bomb our uh, bases in Iraq with no casualties, uh, which is... Um, really just very lucky. We have about 65,000 service members and diplomats uh, in that region right now who are all potentially at risk. And this is not the time to continue to try and wave a red flag in front of the Iranians or the Shia militia that um, clearly were um, disturbed by the fact that they lost 50 of their service members and others uh, when we bombed them late in December. Well, do you think the, uh, uh, the Iranian-backed uh, Iraqi Shiite militia are going to seek revenge for the killing of their leader? I can't say that I have any evidence of that, but um, if prior history continues, there will be an effort to um, get their revenge and to get the eye for an eye. We have got to stop this uh, increased hostility that has been promoted uh, by the administration. Let me quickly turn to impeachment. Uh, we're hearing uh, that uh, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, uh, may uh, deliver those articles of impeachment to the Senate uh, very, very soon. What are you hearing? Well, I think she will uh, do it in due course. Um, she knows exactly what she's doing. Um, and because she has withheld the delivery of those articles of impeachment, we have more information now. We know that uh, Mr. Bolton is willing to speak to the Senate. We also know that um, the Center for um, Integrity and uh, has received emails that were highly redacted and then subsequently found out that um, they were, in fact, very significant as it relates to the impeachment issue. Again, we're seeing a gross cover-up by the administration. We can't allow that to continue.